Jet engines, or jet propulsion, was a theoretical concept far before it was actually constructed in a working model. In the first century AD, the Greek mathematician Hero of Alexandria described a device named an eolipile that propelled itself around using streams of steam. In 1921, French engineer Maxime Guillaume was granted a patent for a gas turbine to propel aircraft that never graduated beyond its conceptual stage. However, it was later in the 1930s that the first working designs were made by British RAF engineer Frank Whittle and German physicist Hans von Ohain. Both men came up with ideas for jet engine designs independently of each other at the same point in history. Whittle applied to patent his design in the UK in 1930, but was only granted it in 1932. Ernst Heichel, von Ohain's employer, applied for a patent in the US in 1939 and listed Max Hahn, von Ohain's master machinist, as the inventor. The patent was granted in 1941. Despite Whittle patenting his design first and being the first to construct a working model in 1937, von Ohain ultimately won the race to create the first working jet-powered plane, the Heinkel HE-178, in August 1939. In a heartwarming turn of events, after the Second World War ended in 1945, Whittle and Von O'Hein actually met and became friends. But why did they bother at all? Propeller-powered planes were working just fine, weren't they? The thing with jet-powered motion is that it can be faster, quieter, and more steady in the air than a propeller. It is also extremely reliable due to having fewer moving parts to cause internal friction during operation than other engines and a large amount of funding to ensure quality and safety once people realize the benefits of the technology. With jet engines, we have been able to break the speed of sound and achieve unprecedented maneuverability in the air and in space. It's evident that jet engines are an amazing feat of technology. Today, we want to explore all we can about how they work and how they've developed with time starting in the air, and then moving beyond it to the vacuum of space. If you're finding this informative so far, please consider giving this video a like and subscribe so we can continue to create quality content. The earliest jet engines, also known as gas turbines, worked by creating hot exhaust gas and passing it through a nozzle to produce thrust. This is much like a modern rocket engine, except rocket engines have to store the oxygen for combustion and atmospheric jet engines are able to use the oxygen in the air instead. Propeller-driven craft are not able to function in space, as there is no air or water to push through the blades. However, the jet engine uses combustion exhaust, known as the working fluid, as its means of creating thrust and allows the engine to function in space. Over time, the technology of propulsion jets has been honed and adapted into many different forms. All of them rely on Newton's third law. It states, every action must have an equal and opposite reaction. When a fluid of gas is expelled outwards, the vehicle or object it comes from must move in the opposite direction. Let's look at some of the many ways we have developed to create thrust in space. First, we have the cold gas thruster. They have been referred to as the simplest manifestation of a rocket engine, involving no combustion there is only pressurized gas being released. Included in the design is only a fuel tank, a regulating valve, a propelling nozzle, and a little required plumbing. They are the cheapest and most reliable thrusters, but also the least efficient with the weakest thrust. Cold gas thrusters are predominantly used to provide stabilization for smaller space missions, which require contaminant-free operation. They are particularly useful for astronaut propulsion units, orbital maintenance, and altitude control. Next, we have the ion thruster. The first ion thruster was used in space in 1998 on the space probe Deep Space One. These take a neutral gas and ionize it, that is, charge it electrically by removing its electrons. Electrons have a negative charge, so when they are removed, the cloud of gas becomes positively charged. When the thruster needs to begin movement, it re-injects the electrons previously taken and the resulting ion movement and gas expansion produces thrust. More advanced ion thrusters are in development in the Massachusetts Institute of Technology as they attempt to develop the first ever plane with no moving parts. The plane looks to use electricity to create a constant ionic wind running through electrode-lined wings. 
Next, we have the PPT, or Pulsed Plasma Thruster. Again, this kind of thruster uses electricity to work, and interestingly, uses Teflon as their fuel. Teflon, also known as polytetrafluoroethylene, or PTFE, is a waterproof, non-stick, synthetic chemical used on the bottom of your frying pan, in light bulbs, and fabric protectors. PPTs work by charging and igniting the Teflon with thousands of volts of electricity, vaporizing it and transforming it into ionized plasma. This plasma allows electricity to be conducted around a loop, creating a magnetic field which pushes the ionized plasma outward into space. Again, thrust is created using Newton's third law. One might ask why isn't this used more? Why only in space and not in planes? The answer lies in the amount of energy it produces. PPT has great fuel efficiency when burning Teflon. However, the amount of electricity required to ignite the Teflon into plasma and sustain it as plasma is huge. Dan Lev from the Technion Israel Institute of Technology has said that for a plane to be propelled in our atmosphere, an array of plasma thrusters would require a small electrical power plant, which would be impossible to mount on an aircraft with today's technology. Finally, we have the M-Drive. Not to be confused with M-Propulsion, M-Propulsion stands for Electromagnetic Propulsion, and the plasma thruster is one of many successful examples of M-Propulsion. However, the M-Drive is a concept for a radio frequency resonant cavity thruster. Sound complicated? In layman's terms, the M-Drive proposes that it can propel itself by reflecting microwaves inside the device. The M-Drive has been given the nickname the Impossible Drive because it violates several laws of physics, including the law of conservative momentum. Strangely, it was only after several years of development that NASA admitted that the M-Drive was, in fact, impossible. Overall, there are countless thruster designs currently in use in the water, the air, and the vacuum of space. However, the invention of the jet engine is certainly one of the most significant breakthroughs in the development of thruster technology. Do you have a favorite thruster design? Let us know in the comments below while hitting like and subscribe. Until next time, TechWikis, goodbye.